Uh, and away we go. Um, what's going on, YouTube? Uh, Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, Keith from 93 Lumber, um, back oh. with, uh, yeah, this is a weird one. Usually we do these in person, but, um, yeah. you know, desperate times require desperate measures. So we figured we'd uh, we'd do one of these uh, massive online bottle shares, which is kind of funny because I was thinking about, we were thinking about doing them one soon before all the shit went down. And then we're kind of toying back and forth on what we should do. And a couple people, because the last one we did, what was the last one we did was the, what was it? The dogfish one? No. The, uh, no, we did the Kaiser, but that wasn't a, a beer. That wasn't a beer share. That was us just drinking on camera. Oh, yeah. Then the dogfish head was the last yeah, one. Yeah. The dogfish head one was <laughs> still the, uh, was the last one we did. And we kind of threw out some ideas like, uh, what do people want to do? A couple of people said Orval. And, I, and then Keith, and I think during the Kaiser one, you said you never had Orval. So we're like, fuck it. We'll do it. Um, I'm going to let you guys in a little secret. Keith is going to love Orval. He's absolutely going to love it. I think it's a fine beer. I think it's tasty. It just doesn't blow my titties off like everybody else does. <laughs> we'll see how he he, uh, he gets down with it. But um, I really, for, I honestly forgot that this past two days ago was Orval Day. There's actually Orval Day. Yeah, it's this. Um, well, it got postponed technically because of the oh. COVID nineteen thing, but it was supposed to be Sunday. This past Sunday, I believe it was um, supposed to be, and it got postponed. But I was thought that was kind of a kind of a nice little uh, kind of a bow on top of this one. So. So we're going to be doing Orval, for those who don't know. Um, I picked my bottle up uh, about an hour and a half ago, and Keith got his early in the week. Just for those playing it at home, you can bring any vintage you want to the table because actually trying to sync up vintages would be way too hard here. Mine is uh, bottled on January 4th, March, April 25th of 2019. That would be my age. What do you got there, Keith? And mine is July 24th, 2019. So we're not that far. Um, you know what I mean? We're not that far off as far as date, which is kind of cool, but I do know Orval can be quite a bit different from batch to batch. So it'll be interesting to see what's what. Let's jump in the comments real quick before we actually move on to anything else. Um, uh, Mercy Beers was talking about, um, joining in actually a couple of days ago in one of my, um, one of my live, uh, uh, one of my posts and he has a 2017 vintage, uh, ready to go with an Orval glass. I do not have an Orval glass. I don't know where mine went. I had one. So I grabbed my Chimay glass, which is pretty much exactly like the Orval glasses up says Chimay instead of Orval. I'm so using my that. I'm using my Duvel glass with the butt on it. That works. Yeah, that one there. Little butt cheeks, son. <laughs> yeah, a little skinny dipping. Um, we also have our nerd sense in. I don't know. Let's see who this is. Um, I don't know if it's Sean. Oh, no, it's Sean. Yeah, Sean is uh, here. He says, Ditto, I'm on to 2018. Um, so we got a couple different vintages in here. Uh, Thibault try. Triteca says we're all set. Awesome. It'll be a little bit before we pop a note because I have to finish one of my beers in front of me first. And Mercy say still finishing beer. Don't rush. Simon Mueller says, hey, what's up? Is this social distancing at its most optimistic? If you know anything about this whole like online bottle share thing is two things. One, Keith is not Keith. He's Mark Ruffalo. And two, <laughs> Mark Ruffalo is not optimistic. So uh, while we will, we will speak of optimism, but it is a veiled attempt at optimism. And, uh, and yeah, 23 October 2017, Mercy Beers uh, says, let's see. Um, uh, Matt and Keith, the Belgians would kick our hides for what glasses? For what? What? For the glasses? Why? Well, yeah, the well, we can only the, tr the traditional because they're not all. No, well, well, it's because it's not proper glassware, but this is like literally if you just take the lettering <laughs> off of this, it's exactly the same from the gold, goldish trim to the shape. It's the exact same glass that Orval yeah. uses, but doesn't say Orval on it. So I don't, I don't have yeah. one of those. So yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, "Cheers, fools! What's going on, son?" And uh, Jordan Wadsworth says, "Hey, boys, drinking of Revolution's Death Star myself. Um, not a Belgian." But cheers nonetheless. Well, you're going heavy, brother, because uh, yeah, that's not some um, some uh, easy stuff to ease into. And Mercy says Belgians take their glasses very seriously. They do, but I mean, beer. I'm not about all that pomp. Like if I had proper glassware, I'll do it just for fun skis. But I, I could, I could. The glass that Keith has right now, I could. That's like if someone said you get have one glass for the rest of your life. Not necessarily the graphics, but the shape. Just give me a tulip. You know what I mean? An old school Belgian style tulip, and I'll drink everything out of it all day long. Um, what are you drinking now, Keith? 
So uh, you're not trying to do value. <clears throat> Bomb place, stupid kitty. It is four percent, and it's a. I think they call it something else, but it's like a pale ale, or something. I don't know. Okay, which is kind of fitting, because that's kind of where uh, Orval kind of lies. Because when you actually look at it and uh, look up at the actual like style of beer, I believe they don't call it out on the bottle itself. But if you look it up, um, I believe they call it a pale ale too. Um, I should have did this research beforehand, but uh, uh, let's see what they say here. Keith will probably get to it first. Beer Advocate actually has it set as a Belgian pale ale, but I would kind of probably classify it more as, I don't know. It's weird. It's like, it, it'll be interesting to see what you think when you actually dive into it. Um, but it, it's one of those beers that it, it, it's kind of covers a lot of ground when it comes to the styles. Um, it, it's almost like a, some pale ale, some Saison, um, some kind of uh, table beer. Like there's a whole bunch of different stuff kind of floating around in there. So it'll be pretty fun. So it's kind of interesting that you're drinking that stupid kitty, which is their pale ale, but probably a little bit different. Yeah. I'm drinking Wales, son. I'm drinking Vletten's Pilsner, <laughs> which is about $4.50 a four pack. <laughs> This shit is delicious. Um, I will drink this all day long. This was canned almost um, uh, three quarters of a year ago, and it's still delicious, and it's been sitting on a shelf the whole time. That's why Vletten's does not suck. Do you like that? You've had that before, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember when it was. It, I think it's been a while since I've had one of those. But... Okay. I don't know. I I like those shelfy pilsners and lagers and stuff, and because they're good no matter how, how old they are, they're always good. Yeah. No. I mean, uh, like I, like right. I said, I almost I was pretty much out of beer. I've been kind of trying to take a pump the brakes in the beer a little bit because I went a little too hard with combination of my dad dying, drinking a little too much, and then probably you know this thing being home, not doing anything. I'm eating and drinking too much, so I'm like, okay, I'll pump the brakes. So I haven't had beers for a few days. And um, and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do the Orval thing. So I popped in that place and I grabbed a couple of different couple different chuggers. I didn't buy anything. No, I brought something I might review. I don't know. I bought like a, a Duge's Duge, I guess is how you pronounce it. Pa uh, Imperial Stout. I forget what it's called. But I grabbed uh, the um the new Lawson's. We'll see how this is. I've never seen this oh. before. I think this might be a new yeah. one. That's um, it's it's not a new beer, but it's new to distribution, I believe. Yeah, it's a it's um. God, it's two, not even two weeks old. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm kind of pumped about this one because I always love me some Lawson. So, I mean, we had a blast when we were up there, you know, we went up there for a whole farmstead, which speaking of, did you see the news, huh? News today for a whole farmstead? Oh, yeah. Closed, Closed March 25th. Indefinitely. Yeah. I think that might be the first brewery that is closed just like we're fucking closed. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, that I can think of. You know, every other brewery is kind of like pivoted and try to turn into like a dish. You know, other halves putting cans in supermarkets. You know, and uh, and uh, yeah, and the uh, Hill Farm set is a uh, is well, uh, is. It makes sense because they don't really have a local. Uh, they don't really have a local scene or whatever. So yeah. like. Like pretty much everybody who goes there is traveling hours to get there, so they're. Uh... Sean doesn't realize he's on screen yet. <laughs> no, I did not realize. <laughs> I was waiting for you to do something kooky, um, but yeah. But anyway, let's do this. Let's do this, Keith. Let's. Do you have a glass in front of you? Who me? Yeah, yeah, an empty one. Okay, let's open yeah. them up because Sean already has his open up. Let's yeah, actually I, just uh, get through it. I did it wrong. No, it's okay. You didn't know where you're, you did, you didn't know he was coming on until about five minutes ago. Yeah, so. yeah, because he was in the chat, and I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm like, what are you doing? Come on, on. So I forgot, anyway. a, I forgot a bottle opener. I'll be right back. That's okay. I probably forgot my two. I know I have some somewhere. I do not know where. This one will work. Okay. Uh, what's your experience with Orval, Sean? So I had it recently. Well, not recently. The last time I had it was. On my honeymoon in Belgium, we went to um, there's a well-known beer bar there. I can't think of it in Brussels, and they actually had like a bunch of vintages on there. So I had like three of them. 
in one sitting. So, but before that, very I mean, old ones or like very old vintages or or relatively. I think the oldest I had was probably 2014. So not that old. That okay. old. Okay. Was that the first time you ever had it? No, I had it here and there. Like, but but it's it's more one of those beers that I just kind of take for granted. Yeah, it's one of those beers that honestly. Um, I just, I, and I've said this before multiple times, but I'll rehash it now. Is that I like Orval? I think it's a point. quite, I think it's a tasty oh. beer, yeah. and I'll drink it. I'll never push one away. But it's also not a beer that I'm like go gaga for. I know like so many people are like Orval is like or Orval's like the there's always that old guy, and like a like a Andy 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 whatever uh, like one of those old hats. The old duster hats kind of at the end of the bar that's like like hates all new beer that's just like mm, if you don't know what Arval is you're not a real beer fan like it's almost like the fallback for that old curmudgeonly guy yep um and I am that guy um, but I I like it I think it's tasty and I think it's fun but it's never ever blowing me away um for Orval last year uh, Orval day last year I actually did a live stream of me kind of drinking Orval and talking about beer and um and yeah it was nice, but I mean, as far as it looks, I mean, it's a pretty fucking beer. I mean, as far as this goes, I wish I could, I could probably do that. I could probably, I mean, it is pillowy, creamy, delicious goodness. I mean, look at that. I mean, you could float, you take, you could sleep on that shit. Serta ain't got nothing on that. It looks like whipped cream. That's how delicious that fucker looks. So, I mean, she looks like a pretty beer. She's got this nice kind of soft, like, um, what does that look like? Almost like apple cider wine. Kind of thing, like an apple wine kind of look Actually, to yeah, it. Good way to put it, yeah. You know, it, is your head still retaining from that giant? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can even see, like, like I mean, a lot of these Belgian glasses have the agitator in the bottom, yeah. so mine's going ape shit with carbonation from the agitator. Um, Ooh, mine too. Yeah, yours probably has the D on the bottom. Mine yeah. has a C. Keith likes the D, um, but I, um, you know, and I do. <laughs> And uh, and by D he means Donald, um, but um, because he wrote write songs about him when he feels all happy and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, she looks the part of a nice. Let's put it this way: she looks the part of kind of like I don't know. I wouldn't classify it as a Belgian pale ale because it's not all that pale. It's actually way darker than a typical that, Belgian yeah. pale ale. Um, I wouldn't classify it as saison. It's it's like a copper. It's like a te it's like a five shilling ale. It's like a light kind of English style looking color to it. Something you'd yeah. find at Bon, right? Yeah, like a cascale. It, it kind of looks like yeah. Mui. It's like yeah. similar to Mui. Yeah. It's a little bit yeah. darker than that. A little bit darker. What are you guys getting a nose? I, I just snorted a bunch of foam. So cheers. Yeah. There's something universal across almost all, all of all, and I like it, but I get it pretty much at every one of them. It's and, like a funk. Well, or I'm getting funk. Don't forget, I'm, I'm, we're, we're all different vintages right now. So. Yeah, I wrote it down so we, I can show you later in case somebody calls out. It's it's like an every Orval I've ever gotten. But mine has some cool kind of like toasty caramel, like bready thing going on that I haven't got from Orval. I don't remember ever. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, on top of that other note, there's like a, it's weird. It's almost like a, a slightly caramelized version of like Captain Crunch or something like that going on in mine. Like a sweet, a sweet cereal malt. Kind of thing going on in mine. A little bit sweeter, a little bit more caramelly, sugary caramel sweet, brown sugar sweet for me. Yeah, I think if I had to smell this blind though, I'd probably say this is like more of like a, a tart size on. Like if if I didn't see it, if I didn't know what it was, if someone just put this under my nose. At least mine g give me that like funky tart vibe. Like you're you're the 2017, 2018, 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah see for me, there's no. It, it's not. It's and this is okay. The thing that I always get on it is in, and this probably is where you're at. It's just we're thinking about it from different angles. Instead of tart, it has that little snappy bite you get it from a green apple skin, yeah. where it's not yeah. necessarily like a tartness, but it's like, and that's like a like a, a very kind of common trait in a lot of Belgian yeast beers. And you get this just it's not sour, but right at the end, you just get this little snip, little snap yeah. of a like a little <laughs> bit of like. Tart, like like a tartness, that green apple kind of tartness. So yeah, I mean, it smells really good. Mine smells way better than I thought it would, but it way. Like, I'm almost like think I'm having like a like an aneurysm because that toasted thing I've never gotten before. On yeah, this, I'm not on mine. Yeah, I'm not. I've never gotten it before. But what about you, Keith? It smells Belgian. Yeah. 
That's why they call him the best color man in the business, man. That's all I have to know. You know what I mean? That's all you got to know. Yeah. That's why he's but here. What Sean was saying, like the Cezanne thing, mm -hmm. I'm getting that. Yeah. I am getting that. Okay. Let's see what she tastes That's like. Good. Cheers. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. It's all over my Yeah, face. for me, it's a ton of that green apple. And then a oh, lot yeah. of peppery, like coriander, mm -hmm. pepperness. Like mm -hmm. not even Cezanne pepper, just like straight like white pepper, coriander, that level of kind of pepperiness. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, like the coriander, very much so. The white pepper. I never thought of that until you said it, but yeah, but but definitely in and, and, and the green apple's prominent, and then it leaves this weird aftertaste. Like not funky, but like not astringent either, but it's a weird. Okay, sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Zoom tight. Oh, uh, Corona. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, fucking. And here's the thing: you said not funky, but I actually think funky is the appropriate word, or should I say, the typical barnyardy horse blanket funk that most horse blanket. Yeah, I guess you're right. Most, yeah, most, most people use that word, but they use it in a different context nowadays. Like it used to mean like that funky says on a horse blanket thing that I think is kind of in here, but I think now it's gravitated towards more sulfury or more acidic kind of like sour yeah. funkiness. So I think what you're saying is more correct. If that makes any sense. Uh, what mercy beer said musky. That's that's it. Musky or musty is, is, is a good way to kind of go with the aftertaste. Oh, musk. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a prominent musk. Yeah. Like 60% of the time it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> Got a musk up, um, but uh, what not, about you, Keith? What are you getting? It is like a musty, but it's not like the the old book musty that I like. No, it's like it's like it's like it's like, like a, damp cedarwood must. It's yeah, like burnt, like like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Simon's actually saying this. Keith is your first time having it, and this is your first time. First time drinking beer. I don't. I don't drink beer. <laughs> No, first um, time having a revolve. It says first time drinking beer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think you make this beer, but yeah. This is this Keith turned 21 today. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. And this kind of goes back to the beginning of the beginning of <laughs> Mercy's like Matt Band in 24 countries. Because <laughs> I don't like Orval. It's it's a fine beer. It's probably a little bit too peppery, a little bit too spicy, a little bit too woody, a little too cedary, whatever you want to call it. Um, any of those things would work. And I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's tasty. But so many people kind of like there's a like you have to like give it props and respect. They're like, oh, don't talk bad on Orval. And, and I don't want to be a cynical douche, but I think it's a fine beer. It's just not it's not 93 lumber. It's not. Nope. <laughs> not at <laughs> but all. But here's the thing. Every time I have it, I'm glad I had it. That's the funny part about right. it. I'm like, it's not like I'm like, oh, fuck this beer, and I dump it. I'm like, oh, it's you know, pretty tasty stuff. Do you seek it out, though, ever? No, right? Like, No, no, no. I drink Orval exclusively. And let's put it this way. I'll say this. Orval on draft is a completely different ballgame. Completely different ballgame. Like, I – last time um, – there was or a couple of years. It's been a couple of years, probably about four years ago. I did Orval Day. We had a um, up by where I used to live. There was a bottle shop, a great bottle shop called uh, Sabatini's, and they have like a crazy amount of beer. Like they probably have like a couple thousand different bottles of beer, and they have like twenty eight taps. But out of the twenty eight taps, like eighteen of the taps are like Schneider Aventinus and Orval and fucking like all the like old school shit. And they did Orval Day, and it was basically it was like four dollar pints of Orval all day or something crazy <laughs> like that. I'm like, I'm in. You know what I mean? They even yeah. had an Orval glass that was like I think it was like a three liter glass, like three liter glass, like That's the amazing. glass you have to hold it like this. And it would, yeah, it was it was like something like sixty bucks to fill it up. It was crazy, <laughs> but um, I drank five of those and it didn't suck, man. I mean, I, it was really good. So I don't know if it has to do with. Uh, draft being better in general because that typically tends to be the point, especially if the beer is taken care of better. I don't know if it's because draft beer is always taken care of better. 
almost exclusively. You know what I mean? Like there's less room for the beer to go sideways. I don't know. This beer, honestly, this beer could have been sitting on the top of the shelf at the place I went at in front of that window for uh, right. uh, the, the however many months it was sitting there. I don't know. And it's a tasty beer and it's fine beer. It just doesn't blow me away. Yeah. Because I remember I, I bought this bottle right close to right after I got back from the honeymoon because I was I was like on obviously I came back from Belgium so I was like on a Belgian kick at that point so and I, and I was walking by a shelf and I saw it and then I actually found it on Saturday in the back of like the kitchen cabinet where I never really store beer I don't even know why I put it there probably was I was drunk one night like I'm gonna drink this later and then it sat there for over a year um, <laughs> so yeah I never seek it out like like I never really kind of go to the store for an or orval ever. But it's still a really good beer. But again, if I saw it on draft someplace, I think I would order it on draft because it's very rare to see it on draft. But bottle wise, I'd probably pick something else, Belgian wise, Belgian pale. Yeah, the only time I ever pick these up, like in a, it, it's kind of a habit for me, um, is like anytime I see a, a big shelf of dusty Belgians, I always rotate them. And I always look for dates. Yeah, and like if I can randomly come across one of these that's like ten years old, and I'm absolutely one thousand percent buying it. You okay. know what I mean? Like, so that's the only time. I'll, it's not necessarily seeking this beer out, but it's like, okay, that that looks dusty as fuck. Let me see how old it yeah. is, kind of thing. You know? So what do you think, Keith? Uh, I like it. The apple, the apple thing, I really like. I really like the apple thing, but I don't. That aftertaste, end of the, the finish is is weird to me. Though the peppery dryness that like almost like like the aging on cedar cedar chips or cedar wood or something like that. I don't know what it is. Or is it something different for you? Yeah, it's like it's like that dry, like kind of like yeah, wood aged kind of thing at the end. See what it's like drinking it with the dregs. I always like to do that, see how she comes off. Now look at that beer. Look at how, I love how it pours out like like Yeah, that's how you know. That's that's, 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 that's against <laughs> YouTube rules. And you know, it, it, entirely different beer, obviously, because you're drinking it with all the yeast and whatnot. I think it kind of it kind of softens it a little bit. Doesn't make it as doesn't make it as harsh. I think it gets less of that green apple, less of the tartness. As like the more you drink, the more your palate becomes accustomed to, and it becomes a more flavorful kind of fuller beer at that point. So maybe that's why when you had five of them on Orval Day, you were really like into it. Yeah. And the more you well, drink, that, the more. It, well, well, obviously you were getting drunker and drunker too. So. Well, no, no, no. That's the thing too. It all like a lot of time when you drink beer, it has to do with context and, and yeah, the and environment you're in. You know, I'm having a, I'm hanging out with friends. It's Orval Day. I'm, I'm drinking. You know what I mean? Having a great time. Like. Obviously, that's going to affect my mentality and how I go into yeah. things and stuff like that. So, I love your fucking old Latrap glass, man. Where the fuck do you find that thing? It's not a Latrap glass, is it? No, it's a um, Conning's Coven. Yeah, Conning Conning's Coven is the actual name of Latrap. The brewery, oh, really? But, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I have that's this forever. That's that's an OG. Like, if you look at it, do I have any Latrap? Bottles? This was yeah. probably my first like ever craft beer glass when I first got into it. I just like the style. Yeah, like Latrap. If you actually, you know, if you look at it it's on the bottom, it says where it brewed. It's brewed by, see, you can barely see it. It says brewed by Koningsoven. Oh, right shit. There. Yeah, they, um, and for, um, I don't know why they do that. You know what I mean? But, uh, they, um, for, that's why I said old, old school glass, because there was between like 2005 and 2011, mm -hmm. something happened with the name where they could only brand their beers Koningsoven. Like they couldn't brand them La Trap. I don't know what happened. I never found out. And I forget my buddy. I think one buddy told me, but I forget. So f like pretty much up to 2005, it was all the trap. And then all the trap beers were Koningshoven up until 2012 or 11. And it went back to the trap. So that, that glass has to be from like 2005 to 2011 or something like that. That makes so sense. That glass is. Yeah. Yeah. Does that get me more cred? With the Belgian breweries out there, I don't know Mercy <laughs> beers that I know that Koningshoven. I don't know if that actually gets me any <laughs> street cred back. Am I allowed in any <laughs> any more countries? Because I know that that little tidbit. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, fun beer. What do you guys think? Let's go through the comments. See what they think. See what people actually speak about this. I always forget about the comments. Um, let's see here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, 
Going back, going back, going back. Okay. Uh, Mercy Bear says, I usually have uh, usually I have standard unbranded Abbey glass for other bells and beers. I have a bunch of unbranded stuff, but I felt like using this one. So I don't get all that pompy about stuff. So La Belgians, they give me headaches, even the low ABV ones. Hmm, must be a yeast thing, I would assume. That would be the only variant for you, Will, if it's giving you headaches. Um, uh, maybe carbonation too, because they tend to be a bit more lively carbonated. Maybe it's a carbonation thing. The soda give you headaches. You know, maybe it's that carbonation that gives you a problem. Um, <clears throat> um, Trappist beer, they are the exceptions that prove the rule. Uh, that I read that and I just go, hey, Mercy loves Trappist Tales. That's all that says. He loves them. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Thibault says, uh, just had a Zunder 10. I haven't had one of those in a billion years. And St. St. Bernardus at 12. At 12 from St. Bernardus is like King should fuck them out and delicious. Yep. Like that's probably like my second or third favorite Belgian quad. You know, um, number one Belgian quad for me would probably be Rochefort, Rochefort 10. And then probably second would be Le Trap quad. What about you guys? Do you have specific ones that you dig or you're not that big into Belgians? I'm not sure. No. I probably could have named them, but. App 12 is just so easy to get. So it's, yeah. 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 Keith's like, nah, I just, I just like beer. Yeah. I like, I like Belgian stuff, but I don't have, I don't think I have a favorite or maybe I do. Maybe I do. And I'm just not think, just not remembering it right now. I might, I don't know. I'll think about it. Simon, <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm probably, is that, well, how would you guys pronounce that? Is that, to bowl, tie ball, tie ball, tie ball. I don't know. Are actually practicing social distancing on our own, even though we only live one point five miles apart. That's what you need. That's that's the thing. That's you. It, and I know you're kind of half joking, but that's the social distancing that needs to happen. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not traveling from place to place. It's the don't hang out with your friends. You know what I mean? Don't all that shit. And that's what makes it tough. And that's why we do these things. So you people can actually hang out and do something. So that's very cool that you're actually doing that. Um, someone says, hi, Sean. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and it says, uh, use your teeth, Keith, for opening a bottle. Because you don't need a bottle yeah. opener if you use your teeth. Um, very, very pillowy head. Very much so. That was the quintessential pill pillowy. Like Matt's when he opened the um, then dissipates like Sean's. Mine is still going strong um, with a decent head on it. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, me making fun of Keith. Everybody's like, sweet burn. burn. <laughs> Keith is the D lover. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's, very mur yeah. Mine's very murky. Belgian y smell. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's the funny part Belgian <laughs> smell is kind of like saying. Like a lot of times, if you go, that smells Belgiany. A lot of people kind of give you shit, going, "Really? You're not really saying much." But I think it's an accurate description of the beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what does it smell? It smells like sometimes I say it smells. It tastes like beer flavored beer. This tells it smells like yeah. Belgian flavored beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Let's see. We got anything good going on here? A lot of cheers. A lot of uh, Keith's face is telling me something. That's why I thought you're gonna hate it. Um, cause he, your face looked like he didn't like it. So I was like, I don't think he likes it. No, I, re I really like the apple part of it, but then that finish is, is a little weird for me. So, but yeah. I like it. Yeah. I Mark Ruffalo drinks bourbon. Um, <laughs> never seen it on draft. Um, only ever seen Duvel kegs. Um, yeah, we get that. Um, I was lucky to where I lived next to like one of the craziest, I mean, you know, the purse, the guy that owns it is nice enough, dude. He's kind of a douchebag a little bit, but um, he had a crazy this this place. Goddamn, it was insane. Let's put it this way: the place that I used to go, and you'd actually go back in my old reviews and you see I do a tour of the bottle shop right before it opened. Um, there was this little pizzeria by me called Sabatini's Pizza. It was just Sabatini's Pizza. You go there and eat pizza. It was you could sit maybe I don't know fifty people in the place if it was packed. Tiny ass pizza place, but they had about I don't know. One two thousand bottles of beer in this cellar of old like Cactillon and what is like crazy the amount of beer this dude had. Like he was just a beer geek. His dad owned a pizzeria. He was a beer geek. He's a little bit older than me, and he just hoarded crazy beers for years and years and years. And you wouldn't know it. You sit down and order pizza, and you'd be like, "I'm getting pizza," and you'd be like, "Give me your beer list." And you're like, "What the fuck is going on right now?" <laughs> you're like, "What is going on?" 
like Hardee's everywhere and all this shit and crazy. So they own this property next door. And um, it was huge. It was like a, it was like a play place for like kids, so like Chuck E. Cheese kind of thing. Then it was like a mattress store, like that kind of size place. And then probably about, I forget it was maybe about like six, seven years ago. He's like, fuck it. He couldn't rent it. No one would rent it. And he's like, fuck it. I'm just going to open up a bottle shop in a bar over there. And he made it like crazy, like did not spare any expense and made it insane. And it was one of the cooler concepts in that, um, in that it was a full fledged bottle service craft beer bar. And that they had, like I said, a bunch of taps and a bunch of beers, but then it was like, there's like a, a, a kind of like a railing that divides that area from the bottle shop section. So you go to the other section, which is still all open air, but they're kind of divided and that's the bottle shop section. And there's an insane amount of beer there. Anything you wanted, you could buy over there and it didn't, it didn't cost anything extra. Like it was bottle shop prices. If you wanted to be served, they would take it and chill it and do whatever you wanted to serve it to you. And it would be whatever it was on the shelf. There's no like upcharge and stuff like that. But anyway, um, th- like, the um, the reason why I ended up getting that that beer on draft is because he has like crazy crazy pull with like beer because he's been like going to like he's been going to Belgium he's been going to like Brussels and Antwerp and all those places for years and like he wanted like a delirium um uh what's the word I'm looking for delirium tower it's basically it's it's a basically delirium tremens. Tower. It's basically this big, this white. I'm trying to do it with my hands so you guys see it. Like a, a, a basically a draft system, a three hand, tap handle draft system, where oh, it's like this I'm white looking. thing, yep. and it kind of cascades out and it has three tap. It's really fancy. He wanted one, so he called. He called fucking Delirium. He's like, "Yeah, I want one of these." And I'm like, "Okay, man, we fucking know you. You're fucking awesome. You sell a bunch of beer here. Take it." And he put it, installed it. Well, the way beer works in Pennsylvania is that you can't buy anything beer branded unless you buy it from a local distributor in your region. So one of the local distributors who's a straight super douche was like, where the fuck did you get that? He's like, I've never seen one of those. Wow. And, and no, it gets better. And the guy's like, where the fuck do you get that? And he's like, uh, he's like, I asked Delirium to send me one. They just fucking sent me one. He's like, you're not allowed to do that. He's like, you're not allowed to do that. You, if you want that, you get it from me. And they got in this big argument and shit like that. A dude stormed us. He's like, fuck you. He's like, you're not getting any delirium to put on that fucking, on that system. He's like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> so he calls, the dude calls um, delirium back and they looked into it and it turns out there was two contracts in the same area. So they pulled the contract from the guy that was being an asshole. So, so that they, they this basically fucked over, like the guy fucked over himself. That's, that's how, that's how, that's why this place gets, kegs of Orval gets kegs of this because he has that he he's been in a beer so long and he puts in all the legwork that not only not only does he get all the beer he wants whenever he wants he can conjure up a mic and that's the best part about it wow damn right, damn right. <laughs> what's going on mike nothing good you guys hey, buddy. <laughs> miss you <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What are you drinking? Because if you're not uh, drinking Orval, you can get the fuck out right now. Uh, <laughs> drinking some single cut. Oh, close enough. This is six of one. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Like a milkshake stout or something like that? Yeah, it's um, it's a uh, brew with cacao, vanilla, and milk sugar. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Tastes like Orval. Um, let's get through these comments real quick, and then we'll shoot the shit. Um, ba 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 ba. Um. Uh, buh, buh, buh. let's see. Uh, where did they leave off? Okay, Sex Panther, Mark Ruffalo. Um, never seen a draft. Uh, as Belgian, I personally don't think our fall is one of the better trappists. I don't think so. We've already covered that, as does uh, uh, Thibault saying the same thing. Um, English trappist, I, I, I haven't had anything for I forget the name of it. Tint Meadow, I've heard of them, but I haven't had anything. Oh, they're the newest, um, right. Like yeah, the, one of the newer ones, kind of like, kind of like a uh, Spencer, like Patrick. up by you guys. Yeah. Have you guys, you yeah, because you guys were at Spencer because you told me the big long story about how they gave you beer and shit like that, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I always, I'm, I still want to go there. It's just, it's, it's kind of not easy to get to, right? Like you kind of have to go there. Yeah, like it's not like you can go to a bunch of other breweries and then go. They're there. not open to the public except for like one day a year. I'll get in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone could, you could. Yeah, yeah I, I oh I'd lie. I'd say something. I'm be like, yeah, blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. 
Um, <laughs> but Keith will get in there. He'll be like, I'm Keith, motherfucker. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh, student. It sucks to be have no money in like beer. Let's see. I can't be clicking on all these. Bottle condition versus keg. I like I I like them both. It depends on what's what. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys um get big into it, but I like bottle condition beers for long haul aging um of beers. And I like keg beers for fresh. So if you're gonna give me a beer um that's like two up into two to three years old, I'm probably gonna want it on a draft. And then after that I probably want it in a bottle. That's just my my two cents. But I've had both and they've both been awesome age. So it really depends on how it's handled and taken care of. No, yeah, I'd have to agree. It's I used to be big on draft for everything, and then I'm kind of like, okay, I guess bottles are fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's I think still think drafts the best, honestly, because it's like if you had the same beer, I don't know how, how do I put it this way. So a can of beer is just big, and a keg's like what? How many times bigger than that? Fucking sixty-four times bigger than that. I mean, yep. how many how many sixteen-ounce beers are in a sixty? Sixty. I forget how much. So let's say they're 60, so 60 times bigger. It, if you just talk about heat, it, it takes so much more for heat to affect a single size container. Yeah. And 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 get to the core back and forth in that up heat of raising and lowering heat than it would a single single vessel. You know what I mean? So when you're talking about like almost all hazies are going to be a better on draft, I think, if they're served properly with proper carbonation and on the right system and all that kind of stuff. I mean, if everything's equal and everything's treated the same, it shouldn't be all that much different. But I think I think a case of beer traveling has a much larger chance of going not just not sideways, but not being as as peak as as a sixth of us. That's just my personal personal opinion. That's a valid point. I never. That's the, that's science right there, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it uh, sounds good. Sure. Yeah, always confident, often wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have going on here? Um, five euro for Tip Meadows. They're kind of having a thing back and forth about a Trappist beer. I don't know what they're serving, but five euros, which would be what six, almost seven bucks. Uh, would it be seven and change American? Would be yeah, we'd be at seven and change American at yeah. that point, right? And um, I think it's like two and a half. Is the uh, is it two and a half? One no, and a half. one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. So you're almost talking eight bucks, um, you know, um, for a Trappist beer that's kind of market value, I think, in the United States for any Trappist beer, like a 12-ounce bottle of whatever, if you think yeah. about it, uh, if you're buying sure. singles, yeah. right? I mean, if you're talking five euro for a four-pack, I don't know how they roll over there because I know some of the Trappist stuff can be dirt cheap over there because I know some of the guys can pull some of the Trappist beers like uber cheap. But if you're talking five bucks for like a bottle, a 12-ounce or even – 500 milliliter 750 i think it would be good mm -mm -mm. here you go keith play it you see it <laughs> he wants to play the song that you wrote <laughs> keith play that song that you wrote no play it's not finished yeah. i can't oh you fucker even if it was finished it yeah he wouldn't do it, do it. Yeah. um yeah. I always make sure my guitars are out of the line of sight of my cameras. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, Keith is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so what's the word, Mike? What are you up to? How's life? Um, really just waiting for my company to shut down, you know? Yeah. I heard that you've been waiting a long time and that they don't really give a fuck. Yeah. They, they, they're getting in some gray area because I work in dental and they say, Oh, this is medical devices. So they, they have us showing up every day. And uh, but it's getting slow. Like we're getting to almost down to no work. They just uh, furloughed my brother. My brother's a lead in one of the, the areas, and uh, he just got sent home today. Uh, I'm still there, but I mean, I, I might be gone by Friday. Who knows? Gone, gone, or just? No, it's, I mean, I'll be. I'll still have medical. I'll be an employee, but they won't pay me. I'll have medical and um, my benefits, but I'll have to go on, on unemployment. Okay. I mean, that's the best case scenario, really. I mean, um, uh, besides working, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that's not too bad. How has shit changed for you guys? 
Say again. Sorry. How how has stuff changed for you guys since we kind of did that little quick get together um, the other day um, with me and Sean and uh, and and Ryan um, when we we're talking about we we're talking about stuff. Has stuff changed a lot for you guys as far as beer, as far as your general life, as far as how you operate on a day to day basis? I'd say they locked. Well, they definitely locked down mass. Um, did they put shelter in place yet for New Hampshire, Mike? Uh, New Hampshire is still up and running. <laughs> they closed schools here till the 4th of May now. So that means everything's probably going to get extended. All non-essential business is now closed. Yeah, New Hampshire shut down a lot of stuff, but it's not not like locked down yet. Um, so wait, who's, uh, you're not shelter in place, are you, Sean? We're not necessarily shelter in place, but um, we're told. All essential, non-essential business is closed. Yeah, so basically, don't go anywhere. Do they consider place. beer stores and liquor stores essential. Correct. Yeah, they so do. You're, and we're all in the same boat here. And the best thing about Trillium now is is they're doing daily um, changes of where they're going to deliver. So fire yeah. coming down this way. I know that. I saw that. I saw yeah. the map they put out. Yeah. We have a red hot shit show, um, fucking broiling here in New Jersey, as far as beer goes. Man, it's 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 the most dumbest shit in the history of mankind. So. For those that don't dumber, know, is it dumber than the stuff we talked about last year? Oh, it's even fucking dumber, dude. It's, <laughs> it's right. actually the same thing as last year, but it's amplified. It's like on MSG. You know what I mean? That's not, it's like extra. Um, <laughs> fucking. So in the state of New Jersey, basically in the state of New Jersey, if you have a liquor license, a full liquor license, that means you can sell food, you can sell liquor, you can sell beer. Okay. And that costs, depending, it, it, the price varies, but anywhere between a quarter to a full million dollars. That's how much that liquor license costs. If you want to open a brewery, uh, it costs like between five to $15,000 for a brewery license. So there's such a big discrepancy between the two licenses that they, 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 they purposefully neuter the brewery license to do specific things. So they can't do, um, they can't serve food. Um, they yep. can't have specific events. They can't show the Super Bowl. They can't show like Champions League soccer. They can't show things like that. You can only have a certain amount of advertised events. So, like, say, say you're having a band play and you advertise that via paper or social media, then that counts as one advertisement. You get like twenty a year. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So there's all this neutering that comes with that. And one, yeah, um, one of the things that uh, they can't do is they can't do delivery. They can't deliver anything because you're not really allowed to deliver beer in New Jersey. Um, not, neither can the other stores. The other stores can deliver food and stuff like that. So this shit goes down. So they kind of lift that law. So that in Jersey, I don't know what it's like up there by you guys, but our state uh, run organization for liquor is the eight. We call it the ABC. Um, and they are the governing body over what people can do. So the ABC basically goes, just do whatever you need. Do do what you need to do. Uh, you could deliver beer. You could deliver food. Doesn't fucking matter. Like breweries can't deliver food. They can't make food, so they can't deliver it. But they can deliver beer straight to your door. Um, and a the, the governing body said this. They're like, you can do this. So this morning, the governor told the ABC to tell them that they can't do it anymore. So not the governing body. The governor said breweries are no longer allowed to deliver brewery beer to people's doors. So it's not a vote. It's not some kind of ordinance. It's basically the governor saying, you're not allowed to do this. Now he has the power to do it because the state's in a state of emergency. So he can pretty much do whatever he wants at this point. So basically what happened was, is that there's been this huge, crazy, like groundswell for of support for small businesses, pretty much gone on it everywhere. But it's been like, you know, support local, support your local food place, buy food if you can, you know what I mean? Go to your brewery, spend money there, direct, spend local. And all these restaurants are seeing this and they're get, and they're so pissed they're missing out on money. They basically yelled so much that now the governor is basically saying you can't deliver beer anymore. So basically, no law, no nothing. They basically said you can't deliver beer anymore just because who the people that own restaurants are, are, are peeved. Because, not because they get to do the same thing. They can deliver you know what I mean? They can deliver like I a, 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 a restaurant can fill a, a growler and deliver to your house. They could they could do that. They could still do the same thing. Really? Yeah. Really? That's yeah. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, but they but they see if that the breweries were if they they know that they have so much kind of pull 
that if they shut down the breweries and no one has anybody other option to go through them, so how much money will they make? If they if people want to get beer or want to get food, they have to go to the restaurant. And they can't go to the brewery. Now you can still go to the brewery and get curbside pickup. Like you can't drink yeah. beer there. You can go there and pick up beer. But that's yeah. it, like listen. If the ABC that 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 organ that that governing body said you can't do that, I would hate it. But I would be like you know, hey, Rules. they're being consistent. Yep. They said you can do it. And a single person's like, yeah, no, my buddy who owns 19 restaurants said it's hurting my bottom line. <laughs> so now you can't fucking do it. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. That's like corruption. That's like craziness. Oh, my God. I can't stand it. Like, I just want to choke yeah. somebody out. Some of the Massachusetts beer laws are um, – they're basically corrupt nonsense as well. Uh, I don't remember the articles I was reading a few years ago, but it came out right around the time uh, Night Shift started – um, doing their um, distribution, their, yeah. Remember yeah. The, the, the laws? Of, it was it was some archaic like um, you couldn't leave your distributor, right? Yeah, it's some archaic like um, laws that go back to like the 1930s that were there to just tie you into just bullshit contracts that you were unable to get out of. It's nonsense. Uh, everywhere the the laws are, are so fucking bizarre. Uh, they don't make a whole lot of sense just because restaurants make so much money. They have so much power. It screws a lot of people over. And I, no, and, and I totally, I'm not going to say I agree with it, obviously. And I'm not going to say I sit here and like understand it in a way, but I understand the red tape process. We're not living in normal times. You know what I mean? Like this is yeah. like the, the breweries aren't going, we're going to deliver because we just fuck it. We're going to do it for fun. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, you know, people want to get shit. The most important thing we can do right now is social distancing rather than having people line up at the brewery or, or, or come to the tap room or whatever. We'll have one singular human drop shit off and they pay in advance. They pay over the phone. They pay digitally. There's no cash allowed. They like it's literally responsible. It's responsible. Yeah. And then you just drop it off of their front door and then that's it. So it's, it's a, it's a legitimately good thing that people aren't com communing and, 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 and social gathering and they're just like, nah, no. The restaurants want to make a couple more bucks. Sorry, go fuck yourself. Then again, you know, then again, you know, leadership. I wonder. Lead by example. We hear people right now saying we should open up the country back up. So we'll just fuck. Who gives a fuck? I wonder. I like wonder if there's a. I wonder if there's some sort of loophole where they're just gonna have like, what like breweries are just gonna get like their friends who don't work there, <laughs> and they're just gonna be like. Oh, this person bought this. Can you just go take it there? Just drop it off. <laughs> yeah, just. I'm just I picking this up. Yeah, from but, my you buddy. You, but you can't really do that, though. That's the <laughs> that's the thing. Well, you could, but you couldn't do it and make it work because the reason why the reason why um, deliveries were working in Jersey is because they were scheduling regional areas. Like Sean was talking about with Trillium, they'd be like, okay, you know, have everybody place their orders, and then we'll basically these people who live in this area. We'll go, we're coming on Tuesday. These people live in this area. We're going there on this day. You know what I mean? They're kind of like, because they can't go everywhere every day. They're kind of picking regions and kind of rotating around and delivering beer. I don't think you can do that with your friend on the side. That's the thing. It, to make it profitable. Like, like yeah, if I, like, you know, so, I'm sure if they're like, hey, my buddy on the street wants some of my beer, go take him some. They can do that. But they're like, hey, yeah. these 163 people in Warren County oh, yeah. want yeah, I don't 63 kegs. Do me a solid. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have 163 friends, and I didn't need yeah. to bring them beer. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think everything now is it's it's so out of control. Um, just the way the world is functioning right now, it's weird to me that the government would just step in and be such a like so fucking hard lined on something that like it's really. I mean, why the fuck are you trying to? This is what we used to say in the military. Why are you trying to shit in my happy bag? You know, like, <laughs> this is my happy bag. Don't shit in it. <laughs> you know? It seems yeah, weird that he would take that, that that stance. It doesn't seem like it's it's going to affect anything yeah, except for people's happiness, you know? Yeah, it's not. He's not saying it because it's potentially causing harm or. or yeah. Well, it's a. It, you guys ever seen the movie Revenge of the, uh, Remember the Titans? I don't Probably. think so. Uh, maybe. 
Probably, maybe. That's the really? Denzel Washington. I, I know the movie. It's I know such the a movie. good movie, I man. It's such a good movie. Know, anyway, to... the one part of the basically it's about integration. You know what I mean? Um, you know, uh, basically two schools come together, and there's like you know, the African American portion of the football team and the, and the Caucasian for, portion of the football team, and they start playing together, and there's a bunch of like you know bitching and moaning and, and kind of like racist shit going back and forth, and then the two main characters kind of start like not arguing, but start like kind of like the one the the one white character, the Caucasian guy, is talking to the black African American guy, and he's like uh, he's like man, you know, he's like you gotta fucking do better. He's like if we're gonna get through this, you know what I mean? Like you have to fucking be a team player. And then he says, well, he's like attitude reflects leadership. You know what I mean? So, you know, like if the top is, is, is being a piece of shit, then how do you expect everybody else to act? You know what I mean? If they're like, you expect everybody else to be magnanimous and do the right thing. When the absolute tippy top of the pyramid is just a red hot dumpster fire of douchebaggery. I mean, what are you going to fucking do? Yeah. But it, it, what bothers me about it is that like, (laughs) These people that are in power are supposed to be representative of the people, and they're clearly not making decisions in mm-hmm. regards to the people. They're mm-hmm. making decisions in regards to people with money, and that's really that's not the way it's supposed to go. And that's not yeah. that's really not cool. Yeah, no, that's, that's my opinion. Well, with that being said, I'm going to open another beer because the whole purpose of doing this is so people can sit here and drink beer and not listen to all the bullshit that's happening. I'd rather sit here and kind of talk about beer and stuff like that. So let's put it this way. Sean, you have Trillium coming to your area. Did you are you getting beer from Trillium? Or so are they dropping at supermarkets and shit like that? They're doing supermarkets too, like like stores, but nothing near us. So the plan is for Mike and I and another friend that lives around the block, we're gonna basically I'm gonna order the delivery tomorrow at ten. Hopefully it hopefully we order it because because they're only doing like fifty people a day and then they're cutting it off once they hit their limit for deliveries. Okay. So my plan is to order. I have a sp- I have a spreadsheet of what we're ordering. So then I'm basically just gonna probably put it outside. Mike's gonna come over. We'll have a chit chat through the window. Record pick it. it up. <laughs> record it. <laughs> so that's the plan. Yeah. So it's uh, it seems pretty easy. So I'm I'm hoping we get some, but. You guys should do a live video. In each video is each one of you holding the camera at the other person like 15 feet away, screaming at each other. The beer room. Like, what do you think, Mike? You're like, well, you know, I mean, I'm getting notes of uh, you should totally well, I, thought, I thought about that, or I was like, well, I guess we could just like you could just come in the backyard and we can stand really far away from each other and have like my wife we could have like my wife thrown from the deck and we're just yelling at each other across the yard too. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I saw one's in a couple of fives. I want to. I want. I want to see that. So, depending how, if if we get the order tomorrow, there's a good chance that on Friday there is going to be a very funny video released, <laughs> or a very bad video that Sean thinks is funny. Oh, still funny to me as long as I get a laugh out of it. <laughs> Dude, I agree. I agree. All right, I actually have to go uh, put the kid to bed again. We'll see you, homie. All right, I'll, if 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 I can rejoin, I will. Okay, sounds Sean, like a plan. Sean, yeah. just choke her till she's unconscious. Duck, the, duct tape closet, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing everything. We'll All see right, you, dude. later, fellas. Yep. Bye, Sean. So, Keith, what about you? No work, no going anywhere. <clears throat> uh, I'm trying not to. My parents keep asking me to work, and I'm just like, I don't think it's a good idea because. When you asked me like three days ago, things got worse since then. So I don't. Do you think you're crazy? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, my mom always tells me to not panic. And I'm like, I'm not panicking. I'm literally just telling you what's going on. (laughs) But I don't know. So what's the deal with your. uh... My brother's standing uh, across the room with me, uh, from me, with a pile of bills, mostly ones. I think he thinks the strip club is open. Just can't, uh, him, Just can't touch them, Mike. Just can't touch them. No, I mean, like, <laughs> like empty yeah. camera up in that piece. <laughs> I mean, the ones—it's it's like a pile this big. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Are you on video? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, Someone owns yeah. vending machine company. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see some boobs. He wants to see some boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you um? Uh, so I'm curious, Keith. Um, are you did your did your landlord give you shit, or are you just kind of anticipating shit? Uh, we ask the um, 
the guy we deal with mostly. He like yeah. the maintenance stuff and and whatever. Uh, Britt texted him the other day, and he said the office is closed. So we go to, we go to an office to pay our bills. Yeah, or pay rent. And he said the office is closed. No one is working, but we're required to go drop the rent off at the office in the mailbox. Bad idea, sir. I know, but the <laughs> but the weird thing is, is our lease is up on the fifth of April. So I, <laughs> I'm not even sure what's going on. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm hoping either. Either uh, someone on the federal level steps in, or or uh, uh, governor of Pennsylvania, that guy, um, Tom Wolf. Yeah, um, yeah, he steps um, in and says, uh, says something. But well, there already has been a freeze, though, hasn't there? For mortgages. Uh, from, what, from what I understand, it's on the federal <laughs> level, and it's it's mortgages. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, but most isn't... landlords are not passing that down to their tenants. So, like, the landlords don't have to pay the mortgage on their properties, but they are expecting their tenants to continue pay, to pay rent. As far as I understand. I mean, I'm sure there's some landlords that own the property, so they don't have a mortgage. And I mean, it's a it's a case by case basis, but but uh, yeah, that's a weird, that's a slippery slope. Um, it's kind of like um, like it's it's there's some weird like logistical things about this that like a lot of people not to keep talking about it. It's so hard not to talk about this stuff, but yeah, um, like um, like logistical, like for example, like I for 18 years I, I worked at a tattoo shop, okay. So I worked in, I worked in tattoo shop for 18 years. I worked for myself. Um, it was a cash business and well, all the government businesses are closed right now. So I'm okay saying, well, I haven't worked there for several years, so I'm pretty sure I'm okay. <laughs> I wasn't entirely honest on my taxes. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and, and by that, I mean, I was pretty shitty with my taxes. There was a lot of finagling because honestly I work for myself and not, I, I made decent money, but when you start factoring healthcare costs and all the other things that you get from a normal job, benefits and all those things, it's really hard to make ends meet. So you have to cook your own books a bit. It's just how life is. It's just, it was, is what it is. Government, you want to come after me, have fun. Um, but I see a lot of people because I still have a lot of friends in the industry. I spent almost 20 years in the same industry and they're starting a petition you know, because they feel like they're going to get slighted on all this stuff about like they're like upset because they're like if there is some kind of, you know, assistance for people who lose their jobs, who can't work because, you know, those people can't work. They work in a, you know, uh, an environment where people gather closely together and, they're, you know, there's open wounds and blood, you know, same thing with barbers and all those kind of stuff. They all work in an environment that has been essentially yeah. shut down. So, you know. The tattoo, a bunch of the tattoo artists started this and body piercers and stuff like that started started a petition for and change to be like, okay, you know, we want to be part of some kind of, you know, uh, aid assistance package. And I get the sentiment. I live that world, so I'm, um, I'm not trying to be too cynical, but I get the sentiment, but like, those people cook, those people, my people, um, <laughs> cook the books so badly that I don't think they understand they're going to get nothing anyway. Like when you make when you take home sixty five thousand dollars in cash a year, but you only claim ten thousand dollars a year in taxes, they're gonna base what you get off your taxes. You know what I mean? So when they're like, "Okay, here's your one hundred and seventy three dollars a month," they'll be like, "What are you talking about, motherfucker? I make sixty eight grand a year." And be like, mm, "You claim like eighteen grand a year, dude." And like you, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? You make sixty grand a year. And they'll be like, "Wait a minute, but but no, I make sixty And be like, "No." On this piece of paper you give us every fucking year, you tell us you make eighteen thousand dollars. So we're gonna give you eighteen thousand dollars worth of assistance. So it's stuff like that where a lot of people are like, kind of like think they should, and they probably should get something. But that's kind of the catch twenty two when you do things like that. Same thing with the landlord thing. Like I see this, and this is not to like talk to you specifically, Keith, but I know a lot of people. I know some people. 
that viewed the mortgage thing or the or, or the mortgage thing in combination with rent relief as a, I don't have to pay rent for three months. That's not how it works. You still have to pay the rent for three months. You just have to somehow figure out how to do it eventually. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like three free months. It's like okay, well, you know, let's say let's say let's say you know let's say it, this is over in three months. Per, in a perfect world, hopefully it is. I'm not saying it's going to be. Let's say it is. Well, the mortgage companies are going to be like, well, okay. Either we just push everything back three months, which I don't think will happen, or they'll be like, okay, we're going to add like a VIG onto the month, a, a VIG every month. So let's say we add like a 12% VIG onto your total mortgage payment. So your mortgage payment, whatever it is, add 8% or 12% to that, and then pay that over the course of however many months until you catch up. And then once you catch up, then we'll go back to the way we were. You know, it's it, you could you're gonna have to do the same thing as a renter, but renters are different. They're not tied into a thirty year mortgage. They're only tied into a year to year lease. So yeah. as a renter, you'd have to be like, well, you know, how can I do that with the person that's renting to me? You know what I mean? Like, how can I how can I make sure that I get the money that I'm owed? This is stripping away all the compassionate parts of the argument. People need to live. People need to eat. People. And I'm not trying to lessen that idea. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is when you look at the dollars and cents of it, which is unfortunately the world we live in, the reason why we like living here is because it's a capitalist society. We don't live here because it's fucking a, it's, it's a rainbow and sprinkle kind of damn yeah. candy land. Um, you have to take the good with the bad. So it's a weird it's a weird recipe. That I think it's a really hard equation to figure out how to figure it out. But hopefully people do There's the right thing. There's a lot of gray area, though. Oh, yeah, there is. I you saw know. I saw a thing today. I don't know how true it is. But I saw a thing today. Uh, there was some story about it wasn't an article. It was just like a, a picture of like text messages or whatever. And uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently some person's friend rented like 20 plus properties and put them on a Airbnb. So this guy was renting properties from people. And then he was renting them out to other people, but now that Airbnb, Airbnb is basically non-existent now. <laughs> Apparently, he owes like fifty k worth of rent to these these people that he's renting from, <laughs> and it's just like I don't know, like yeah, but that, like, even that like that dude, that dude might have been doing it for a long time and making bank, but now he maybe. now now this is the month he gets screwed, and there's probably a, a bunch of information. Or a bunch of legalese, and, and 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 that you're not allowed to sublet rentals via Airbnb. So he just he was doing it. Yep. He was playing a game. He just got caught. So really, when it comes down to it, it'd be like there's probably something like you can't do that in Airbnb's like guidelines. He just ended right. up getting caught. So now he's fucked. He won't pay it. I, He'll get off. I think, I think it's based on um, the lease because in our lease it says you can't like you can't do that. So I don't know. No, if no, or, no, but what I'm saying is there's that in your lease. There's a lot of leases that say you can't sublet. But if a yeah. lease has no has no official language saying you can't sublet, that doesn't preclude Airbnb saying you can't sublet the Airbnb rental. Because what I assume is uh, the Airbnb, uh, when you sign an Airbnb agreement, you're basically signing a secondary sublet lease that it basically you have to abide by. That's my, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but that's my guess. So they probably have it and be like, you can't sell the lease that we're selling you. That's my right. kind of guess of it, you know? But I mean, that's kind of like, uh, man, there's people getting fucked all the time. Like my, my niece, my niece is a hairdresser and her boyfriend is a barber. They moved to Myrtle Beach. Okay. They moved to Myrtle Beach last year and they, Last, what is it, three weeks ago, not three weeks ago, a month ago, they started building their own uh, studios in this kind of communal kind of um, um, co-op building. They opened both of their spots, the hairdresser and the barber opened a spot a day before their their state shut everything down. Oh, brutal. <laughs> brutal. They had 24 hours of business. Brutal. Yeah. I know. You know what I mean? Like... But this is where this is where I feel bad for a lot of people because, like, my niece, I have my niece, my other niece, I have my brothers, my whole family. They'll, they'll, they're not gonna, they're not gonna go hungry. They're not gonna lose their house. 
we would never let that happen. They're lucky enough right. to have family like that. You know what I mean? Like in the grand scheme of things, Keith, you're you're lucky. You have your family. You know what I mean? As much as you know, you know, we all we all have our issues with our family and stuff like that. Family works. So some people don't have those kind of things. Some people don't have that kind of that kind of cushion to fall back on. I didn't have it for several years. You know what I mean? So, you know, count your fucking blessings when it comes to these things. I'm not even fucking religious, and I'll say count blessings. You know, that's how that's how cool it is. Anyway. Yeah, I don't have that support system either. Honestly, like I'm, I'm nervous about losing my house. I, I think about it every day. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a, it's a bitch. Uh, and and I'm really, I'm, I'm really um, happy for those that have those things. You know, I don't, I don't ever have, uh, um, I, I don't ever get jealous of people that have more than me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, mean, I'm happy for what I have. I have a great life. I really do. I have really great friends. I, my wife is amazing. I live with, with my wife and my brother. My brother's great. I have a really great life. But like for the most part, like we don't have um, family. My, my brother's a great guy, but like I don't have family to fall back on. Yeah, you know, if if we lose money, we will be in fucking we'll be screwed. Yeah, you know. The old, and it's I like, would say, and I would say that that and probably the best thing that anybody has that that feels that way in this kind of environment is that it can't all happen to everybody like if everybody loses their house then what yeah you know what i mean like what are you gonna do like you go to the bank and be like everybody lost their house so now what does the bank do the bank closes they can't just be like okay they have to figure out some kind of plan to, oh, to oh, make it oh. to make it so it works for them in the end they're, they're giving the banks one trillion dollars per day right now yeah we'll see but how that bank. works out for all the of bank, us the big bank <laughs> one trillion dollars Per 24 hours. Every 24 hours, they're giving the big banks $1 trillion. Yeah. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, in right. general, right. even if you strip that away, if everybody stands up and claps and goes, I'm giving up my fucking mortgage, the banks are destroyed. Yeah. There is a power well, in numbers. Yeah. So I'm not saying I'm not saying it's an irrational fear. Well, oh, no, but, no, no, no. No, it's a know. rational fear. It is. But what I'm saying yeah. is there's also – there is – there is there is light. It's not hopeless. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, the the point is is they could be giving that one trillion dollars per day to people to pay their bills instead <laughs> of just giving it to the banks. Yeah, but you know we go we go and buy fucking fair late stats and not give it to our fucking landlord. So <laughs> we can't be trusted in that shit. You know what I mean? Rent and beer. <laughs> Yeah, and be like, fuck Secondary it. Be like, market prices. So, uh, so I got eight grand today. Wait, Hell Farm said it's closing tomorrow? Oh, shit. I'm going up there and buy everything they have in a fucking shelf. <laughs> I'll drive up there right now. I will drive yeah. up there right now. Yeah. yeah. Be like, how much is it to open a brewery? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when they reopen, everything will be vintage then. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> vintage water. <laughs> No, they ran out of Poetica. They started doing growlers of it. Okay. What are you guys drinking now? Yeah, I'm going to grab a, a, a wine step on or Vetus. Is that a problem? There you go. No, Doppelbox are never a problem, brother. Oh, Vetus? Is Vetus a Doppelbox? Oh, no. No, that's Corbinian. Corbinian. I, I, do, have a, I do have a Corbinian, though. No. I forget what Vetus is. Vetus, I think it's just a. It's just a, uh, a what the hell is Vetus? It's a Weizenbach. Oh, there you go. Close enough. But I don't know if we'll grab one, though. I'll be right back. Sounds like a plan. Uh, <sighs> what are you still, drinking now? I'm still drinking uh, the Bomb Place. The Stupid Kitty. I had a growler. Oh, yeah, a, uh, yeah, growler. I'm, or growler. But I'm opening. I'm opening. I'm going to pour one out for my homies. No, oh, there you go. The whole farts out in this piece. Let's go to the comments real quick. See what we missed. Um, let's see. Um, Mercy Beer says it's good. It's something like any Trappist beer. It's close to English strong ale, very dark, maybe slightly more expensive. Usually not terribly overpriced. I think he's talking about that in tiny tin tomato. Um, let's see. We have here Dean LaRusso chiming in. Okay. He says, I got to step up for Orval, probably my greatest of all time beer. So there it is. You see that a lot. A lot of people really dig on Orval. Surprised there's not more love. Brett Beer in general 
owes a lot to Orval. I would agree with that. I mean, Brett Beer is some of the best beer in the world. I love Brett Beers. It's just Orval, the way it presents itself, doesn't come off as a traditional overt Brett Beer to me or something like that. I like it. And and, and where you say it doesn't get a, a not more love, I think Orval gets wide love. I think a lot of people love Orval. I think the opposite. I think a lot of people, most people love, love Orval, but it is what it is. It gets a lot of love, but it's not necessarily everybody's favorite beer. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and this is probably, God, this has got to be a half an hour ago. So I'm saying, should I crack a, a, a crack open a Duvel Triple Hop Cashmere? I hope you did. Oh, yeah, you should. <laughs> I hope you tried it already. The answer is always yes to that one. <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, ba 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 Keith, what are you drinking now? We already covered that one. He said he's still drinking the Bond Place. Well, Dot saying Gover Governor Murphy. That's right. Now I'm, drinking, I'm drinking this now. Yeah, Nordic Saison from the, the farms of the hills. Um, uh, let's see. Mercy Beers. Do we think a Greek Dutch collab Hazel and Imperial South is a good idea? It is 13%, only a small can. I don't know what that means. Um, Mercy Beers also says also coronavirus stays on cardboard for three hours and metal for four plus hours. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Listen, a lot of the it stays on this, it stays on that. Um, oh. there hasn't been conclusive data to prove a lot of otherwise. Are they are they testing these things in optimal, perfect environments? Are they testing them in real world environments? You don't know. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll take it for real life. I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not contagious, obviously, it is that's why it's more of an issue. Basically, everybody, you know, from the beginning, it's been an argument. It's it's like the flu or it's like the swine flu. It's yeah, neither. It's not nearly as bad as avian or swine, um, but it's not nearly as easy as, as the flu. And it, there seems to be a direct correlation between um, out-of-body life, so shelf life, um, and, and, and severity. So there's, there's, there's typically... The longer something is on a shelf, the less it's going to do harm. For example, like HIV uh, has a shelf life of I think a thirty seconds. Yeah, uh, it, it is. It's it's yeah, thirty seconds. It's less thirty than seconds. Um, but there are some really bad ones, like tuberculosis has a, sh uh, a shelf life of two weeks. You know yeah, what I mean? I think uh, hepatitis is like four days. Yeah. So, it's, but there, a there's time. a lot of them that are are easily treatable and stuff that we have an idea of what to work with and that's why yeah stuff like that so uh, what it says something listen the only way i would have and this is me the beer guy who knows nothing about science that actually deal dealt with pathogens for 18 years so actually knows something but doesn't know anything um uh, it, uh, the only way you should be worried about a cardboard box is if your ups delivery guy has it and he coughs in his hand right before he hands in the package that's where you should be fucking worried about it or if you're making out your Delivery guy, I don't fucking know. Do you? Do you? Do you? I don't hey, want to. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Um, well, Dad, saying you need a special tag on your vehicle to deliver beer in New Jersey. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Legally here in the UK, landlords cannot evict. Uh, here we go. Landlords cannot evict during the coronavirus epidemic, but they charge interest. Um. It's gonna get to it's gonna get to that in the United States. Here's the deal: every single business in, in the world, or in the world, in the world, as per the United States, because that's how we think, um, is waiting for to see what the government does here, with the House and Senate and Congress, and basically the government. What bill gets passed? What bill gets passed will dictate the laws that trickle down. So there's almost like a a linchpin to all this. Once it actually passes. And everybody knows what's going on. Then you'll see wide-ranging legislation because you can't be like nobody has to pay rent for six months, and then the government's like, "We're going to give you all the money plus ten over the next six months." And the, everybody's like, "What the fuck? Everybody has all the money. Why aren't they paying the money back?" So there's like a trickle-down effect to what's going to happen. All that shit will happen here. It just takes longer. Why does it take longer? Because you have people wanting to give money to banks versus you people wanting to give money to people. Yeah. So that might be so long. Um, uh, Will Dodge says cruise lines are seeing governance lessons. Fuck cruise lines. I don't even want to talk about that anymore. And uh, Matt, I know you, your love for age beer is curious. If your seller, if you sell anything in particular, 
I don't have that big of a cellar. For most people, probably think I have this crazy grandiose cellar. I, I'm gonna let you know a little secret. I drink everything I fucking buy or get, get given. It doesn't last all that long. There's a couple of select few things that kind of float around in the corners. Um, but I, I age in the grand scheme of things. I age. I age old ale sitting barley wines. That's my shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's that's my favorite thing in the world to age. Um, basically, it, it goes up on a tier system. So, the best thing you could possibly age is a bottle condition for core four beer, and then from there, it's probably a bottle conditioned adjunct beer. Then from there, it's a bottle conditioned barrel aged beer. And from there, it's a bottle conditioned adjunct beer. From there, you start to get all kinds of crazy moving parts. It's like an old car. It's like you watch an old episode of Mad Men, like the the something breaks. And you can fix it with a pantyhose or pliers. You know what I mean? It's not there's like there's like eight moving parts in the whole engine. Uh, easy to fix. Now in today's cars, you have microchips and and all kinds of different things. Something breaks. You don't. Not only do you not know how to fix it, you don't even know what's fucking broken. Um, so when you have more moving parts in a beer, um, more things can go wrong. So when you're talking about a, a, a hypothetically something like Bourbon County might is the most shelf stable. A beer is because it's 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 pasteurized. So even though it's barrel aged and all that, it's actually anything that would make that beer go sideways over time is killed. So it's not going to go bad, but it's not necessarily going to grow and breathe over time. That's kind of what cellaring beer is all all about. Like it's kind of like liquor. Think about it in the sense of liquor. Like if you buy a twenty year old bottle of scotch and then you put it in your shelf for forty years. You don't have a 60-year-old bottle of scotch. You have a 20-year-old bottle of scotch that happened to be on a shelf for 40 fucking years. Right. But if it sits in a barrel for 60 years, you have a 60-year-old bottle of scotch. So with beer, if it's pasteurized, then it's pretty much... I mean, it's going to evolve in subtle ways. Some flavors will drop off and gain, but nothing like a living and breathing beer. So that's why bottle condition beers tend to work quite a bit better. So when you're talking about a core four, you know, your base four ingredients plus... You know what I mean? Uh, bottle conditioning for carbonation because you need that to gobble up any extra oxygen and to really kind of kill anything that would really cause a lot of oxidation in the beer over time. Your core for bottle condition is always going to be your best bet. And like I said, followed by subtle and adjuncts, um, you know, a little bit of vanilla, you know, milk stout, um, those kind of things will age kind of well. Even barrel aged beers can age pretty decently, but once you start adding moving parts, the more they can go sideways. What about you guys? Know, go ahead. See, um, it's hard to uh, jump to question for a second, but why did was one guy named Simon say he was going to rob me? But you're holding up a fat stack of cash. Oh, that was a long time ago. Oh, fair enough. I forgot. Yeah. I've been drinking beer. Yeah, he has good, he has right. good reason. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Those are all ones, and those are my brothers. I'm hey, robbing him. Times are tough, man. <laughs> times are tough. <laughs> Get the cash any way you can. So you're drinking at a Vitus. Oh, for... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you, you go ahead. You're drinking at uh, Vitus. Is that you've had that before? I assume. Oh, I've I've had it a hundred times. It's my favorite uh, wine step on our beer. I I've never it. had that beer. I I buy it every time I see it. It's like four bucks a bottle. It's yeah, crazy. it's cheap. It's awesome. Yeah, Corbinian, Corbinian, and um, yeah, probably Corbinian is probably my favorite. Yeah, I love that beer. That's my. I think that, I might, love be, it. that might be the first beer review I ever did. Corbin is awesome. I love Cristal. I like it. Brian Stefaner is one of the, my favorite breweries. It's, it's so easy to get, and the beer is so good. I love them. Yeah, I, I dig them. My, my favorite of that area is probably Schneider Aventinus. Um, mm -hmm. Schneider and Sons. Schneider and Sons, so to be like Aventinus and um, the, their ice box and stuff like that. That shit I dig. That's that's some good stuff. You still on that bond, Keith? Uh, yeah, in the Nordic. I'm drinking some steep box, son. That's a good beer. This is an awesome beer. I never had that. What is that? So this is a uh, cane brewing, which is out of Ocean County, New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. It is a American 5.4% pale. 5. pale ale. They picked off a shelf today and it was canned on 313. So that doesn't oh. suck. Right, for a pale, that's perfect. Awesome. And it's fucking amazing. It's like one of the better ones I've had in quite some time. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. It's, just a, it's like a super hazy pale. Like Kane, if you were ever to come down Jersey and go to breweries, Kane is like Kane's the best brewery in New Jersey, by far. Okay, by far, because they like you can go there and get a really good like this is one of the better like low ABV hazies. You can go there and get one of the better stouts. You can go there and get one of the better lagers. You can go there and get they just started like a, a wild 
fermentation program, like a cool shit. They had just built a cool ship about a year ago. So some of their beers are just fucking amazing. Nice. I shared uh, the one with you guys when you're down here, but that one didn't age all that well because it was barrel aged beer that I kept too long. See my fucking uh, point, the buggers? Oh, that uh that vengeful hearts. Oh. I still think of that. I That's still think of that. Theory. Yeah. Yeah, me and Keith drank one of their beers. It's called a Vengeful Heart. It's an American barley wine. Oh, Jesus. You've already, you have already got my interest. Well, here's the no, best part of it. You don't even it, know. You don't it's even an American, know. It's, a, it's not an American barley wine. What it is, and this is the most genius barley wine ever, American barley wine I've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. So it's an English barley wine base, but it's got a new school, juicy, tropical hop, hop profile. So when you drink it fresh... It's like a malty barley wine. It drinks like a juicy hazy, but if you age it for five years, it turns into an English barley wine. That's awesome. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a new school kind of hazy in a barley wine format that instead of the West Coast piney like American barley wine, it's amazing fresh and it's amazing new. It's almost like you get the best of both worlds. If you drink it fresh, you get a totally different, unique, fun experience because almost exclusively for me, American barley wines, I like them, but I like them with age on them. I don't me like too. It fresh. This one is awesome fresh, but even awesomer old. So it's like it's it com completely transforms into a completely different beer. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, which one did you have, Keith? Wait, did you have it aged or fresh? He no, you only had it the one time fresh. I, like, I, what, would you have it keep like four hours fresh? I was like, oh, went the oh, cane yeah. here, and I, <laughs> you, you came to my house yeah, like it. that. <laughs> yeah. We drank it live. Did we drink it on air? Yeah. Yeah, it's in one of the live videos. I forget which one it was. You remember which one, Keith? Uh, it was probably either the dogfish head one or the one no, before it? that. It wasn't the dogfish head, was it? It was either the do it was either dogfish head or the one before that because it wasn't it wasn't this last one. What's the ABV on that one? I think it was like 13? 10? <laughs> 10. 10. Oh. I don't know. Up right now. Well, American barley and, wines are typically higher ABV than English barley wines. Am I am I wrong by that? No, not necessarily. I mean, typical. I, mean, I know everything's you know relative, but um, but that's not amazing. Yeah. I'm I'm really interested in but, trying that eventually. Yeah. yeah. So Matt bought it at the brewery, and he only bought one bottle. Like an asshole, Matt. <laughs> Matt, you're a dick. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't need to. Uh, we didn't need to. Uh, we didn't need to say anything about that. So we already knew that shit. Okay, what do we have there? Vengeful heart. Vengeful heart. Oh, this is that your Advocate version? Ten three. Oh, there's an old one. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. Have they been making this for a while? The new one is. Oh yeah, they've been making it forever. That's why. That's why I've had one that's super old. Interesting. I yeah, mean, but has I, it been? I, has it always been like tropical? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the best part about it. It's always been that way. Um, actually, let's just go to their fucking Instagram. That'll bring us. Oh, is it pro I don't think they post like crazy up here in Kane. Let's see what the new one is. Yeah, I love Kane. So good. Look at Haggard Michael Kane in the background. Fucking old curmudgeon. <laughs> George and I, I don't, know if, I don't know if I can find it, but uh, George and I have this awesome picture of Michael Caine that we share back and forth every now and then. Actually, it's funny because if I find a picture of it, it's probably right around here. It's got to be right around here. Oh, it? Sure. No, it was just their anniversary, wasn't it? Was it after their anniversary, though? Yeah, but it was released uh, earlier. It was actually it was sitting in a brewery for a little bit. It wasn't like, you know what? Oh. Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna I keep going. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'm done looking. Well, one thing that the, the, one thing that sucks is having moved to New Hampshire last year. Is New Hampshire beer is generally not very good. Almost consistently fucking New, bad. New Hampshire. Or, or, yeah, or mediocre. Like Stoneface is pretty good. There's there's a couple okay ones, but really like the, the bigger ones around here like Kelson they suck. There's a really a bunch of like really not good breweries. 
I but just had something. Could, Who's good in New Hampshire? Again, well, we just. Uh, well, the uh, stone faces. I think people deciduous. Like. Is deciduous in New Hampshire? I think they are. Deciduous is good, but it's just yeah. New Hampshire breweries aren't typically like like if you go to Vermont, or go to Massachusetts, go to Maine, you you can name you can name off the top of your head five yeah. or ten really great breweries. New Hampshire, you're like. Um, is that one place? Are they New Hampshire? Uh, and that's yeah. that's everyone, you know. But we we moved here uh, last January, so you know, uh, 13, 14 months ago, and we got something in the mail about this new brewery up the street. Like I'm not even joking. Like four blocks from me, and they're fucking outstanding. They're small. They have very little going on as far as like you know size, but their beer is as good i know this sounds bullshit it's as good as anything trillium is doing it's as good as anything trios is doing their beer is really? out of fucking control outstanding uh sean every once in a while we he comes well, i mean every few weeks we go up and we, we drink ourselves stupid over there they're fucking awesome and it's just <laughs> this little the they're called um a spyglass their beers are fucking spyglass, great. but i don't think it was a brewery thing i think it was something else maybe did they, they just opened they, they've been open like a year and uh, yeah, like like maybe sixteen months, oh, okay. not long. Because I think but, I think I have heard of them, but I don't. I haven't had anything from them. So, so they they do really good uh, hazy IPAs. That's what they mostly do, which is a little bit annoying. But their stouts are fucking great. They do really good um, like tart blondes. They do like they, they have this thing called um, mixed berry entanglement. That's like a it's like a mixed berry sour. It's fucking outstanding. They do, um, they do uh, um, the stouts. They they don't release too often, which is annoying, I guess. But they do like two or three that are really, really out, like r- completely world class. They're awesome, awesome. Mm. I, and, I, and I'm so lucky because I, I mean, I live. I'm not even joking. Like four blocks away. Yeah, road trip, Keith. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go to Michigan. Let's go to Michigan for those uh, for English miles, and then scoot on over. <laughs> well, and, if we get this thing going on this summer or whatever, if we can get get together again, I'm gonna I'll bring cans. You know they don't they, like I said they're they're not that they're not that new. I mean they're not that old, so they they don't have a canning system. They they can occasionally. But I'll bring mm-hmm. cans next time. Like they, you, you'll I guarantee you, they're awesome. I, I love it because every time I came to New Hampshire, I'm like oh, fucking Kelsey. Ugh, oh, this place. Ugh. get ready for okay beer. Pretty great okay beer. Yeah. And uh, spy class is fucking awesome. They're really good. <laughs> so, Keith, is it just pretty much Bond Place and home? What do you mean? Beer wise. Uh, beer wise? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I saw something today that Funk is delivering now. But I didn't. I didn't check to see if they'll deliver here. They might, but they have to, dude. You're like right down the street. I know. But yeah, as far as far as beer goes, Shangi's is open, at, or I go to Bomb Place. Yeah, you're you're pretty much. Yeah, you're covered. Yeah, you can pretty much get whatever you want, whatever you want. I'm pretty good, man. Like in Jersey, everything's pretty much open. I don't go out that much. Like I. I owe uh, like over buying when I go. Like I just buy a bunch of shit, random shit. I'm good for like a week or two, and then I just go back. Like I bought beer today. I think the last time I bought beer was when did I buy beer last. I don't remember. Probably a week before. I'm probably lying to myself, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah. until this whole coronavirus thing, I haven't even been drinking beer at home. I just drink beer with Sean. And I'll occasionally have a glass of wine or something. And so drinking beer, just, drinking beer with Sean is like drinking beer at home, though, kind of. No, a hundred percent. But the thing is, I, 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 Sean lives like you know, I don't know, like 15, 20 miles from me. So if oh, I okay. like, I have a couple beers, and then I can't. I need to drive home. Yeah. Like so, it, it's it's relaxed. I don't do much, and so but occasionally I have a glass of wine or something here, you know. But since this coronavirus shit, I'm like. Bust open the fridge and all these beers. I'm like, oh, I forgot I had this. <laughs> Trillium Streets. Okay, I'll have that. I, I've always like, I, I forgot all these beers I had, and so I'm, I'm drinking them. I'm the exact opposite. 
I drink at home all the time, and I still drink at home now. <laughs> it, it wasn't. It wasn't like I didn't avoid it. I just. I just wasn't doing it. It's not like a, well, no, like yeah. like it sucks because like no, like a weekend, like I, yeah, Keith and I would yeah. like every other weekend at least we'd go take a little trip somewhere, you know, yeah. you know whether it be locally or whatever, go to fucking Conclave or fucking yeah. Equilibrium or fucking Muckrake or whatever, just go to a fucking place. But now it's like none of that. It's just like okay, just come home, have a beer, go play video games, try not to buy more video game shit. And then go to sleep. That's pretty much it. I'm trying to talk myself into virtual reality right now, and I'm, I really shouldn't do it. I don't know. I'm trying to talk myself into going down and getting my brother's PlayStation 4. That yeah. I downloaded Final Fantasy VII on like three years ago and playing that. I am yeah. such a fucking loser. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I, you want to talk losers? I've downloaded Tiger Woods Golf on the PC from 2012, and I've been playing that. That's how much of a loser I am because I just wanted to play a golf game. And I'm like, I'll just play it every now and then. And I'm like, I have, like, all these brand new games on my computer that I just built a new gaming computer that could play any game. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play Tiger Woods Golf from 2012, yeah. eight years ago because I'm that cool. You know? I get it, man. All I want to play right now is Streets of Rage. So, no, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I have very simple tastes. I, like my video game taste ended like 23 years ago. Like, like I'm like, I like Resident Evil One, dude. Resident Evil like five is amazing. Uh, what? I, I remember two. Was there a five? Uh, <laughs> like I'm fucking. I am lost in fucking early 90s, man. I'm screwed. I just don't care. <laughs> Like, like, I'll play Sonic 3. It'd be great. There's a 3D Sonic game? What? Keith, did you change care. your shirt? What? Did you change your shirt? No. No. Oh. no. He changed your shirt or some shit. His costume changes. <laughs> yeah. What are you, Madonna? I, to, I used the restroom. Oh. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Well. Unless you guys have something interesting to talk about, I think I'm done for the night. It's only it's only been an hour and a half. Yeah, we got I at got, least I got, some, hour. I got some golf video games to play, and yeah, Tiger and, Woods, bro. Yeah, Tiger Woods golf and all kinds of other stuff I can play. <laughs> Unless you got into, uh, I can't talk about interesting stuff. Play your guitar, Keith. Do something. Dance, dance, monkey. I'm tired. Ready? Yeah, right. Uh, I will. You know what? Here's the one takeaway I'll, I'll take um, from this whole coronavirus thing. So I started working from home last week. I went in on Monday of last week, not this past Monday the week before, just to kind of tighten up a bunch of shit. Because I knew uh, I, like, I do all the IT at work, so I had to make sure everything was ready for so everybody could work remotely and shit like yeah. that. So I, uh, uh, I, uh, I've been working from home since Tuesday, so it's been over a week. Two things. I have no idea what day it is. Like half the time, I have no idea what day it is. And two, the days go by fucking crazy fast. Like, like I thought it was going to be like this, like, sit yeah. and like, I'm like, this is going to drag by and I'm going to want to kill myself. Like, I'll literally be working and I'm like, I think it's like 11 a.m. and it'll be like 4 p.m. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm like, my concept of time is completely shot. Like, I have no idea what's going on. No idea. Like, I just looked at the clock right now. I'm like, oh, it's like, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. And I'm like, oh, it's fucking 830, essentially. I'm like, what the fuck's going on right now? Are you, are I you, mean, still, you might, what? Are you, are you still working like hours? Like, are, are you basically doing remote? Work? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm constantly working. Like, I'm, I'm probably working more now than I did before. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because I have to do my regular job. I don't have to. If I want to just not work, I can, but I, I'm i salaried. I'm still getting paid. I'm going to fucking do my job because I like right. the company I work for and I like the people I work for. But then on top of that, I have to deal with all the remote IT bullshit. Like, I can't connect. What's going on? My computer's not working. This is not working. Why can't I print here? Because yeah. even though PA shut down, one of, the, one of the companies that is considered an essential business is... Uh, uh, plastic manufacturer. We're a plastic manufacturer, so we're still open. Our company's still open, so I still have to make sure shit's leaving. You know what I mean? And and other companies are still. We're essentially, you know, for lack of a better thing, we're, we're like a boutique 
supply company and we have major hardware companies ordering like fifty, sixty thousand dollar orders daily. Still, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like we still have to fulfill. And when you order, when big, huge companies order stuff, from you there, it's not like, oh, we're not around. Sorry. If you don't right. deliver on time, you get huge penalties. Like they're like, oh, we're going to take like 10 grand from you because you didn't deliver based off of our contractual obligation of your delivery time. Right. You know what I mean? So if we're open and we're <laughs> and we have to do what we have to do. So in half of the workforce that I work, like there's a bunch of people that have to work. There's a bunch of people in the company I work for that have to physically go in and do stuff like laborers. Mm. We're lucky enough to where they're very, they're very separated. They're very, um, like intelligent, conscientious people, you know, like someone, you know, a kid called and said, Hey, listen, you know, I heard a friend of a friend of a friend had exposed to somebody and I was over their house two days ago. So I'm not coming in like, yeah. and this is a person that really needs money. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so we, we were lucky enough that we have a bunch of conscientious people working there. We're a relatively small company. Um, you know, we only have about 40 people. So it's not like we have a crazy amount of people, but we're in a warehouse, so they're spread out. So we're we're we really good to go in that sp- that aspect. But my job, I could I'm graphic design, 3D CAD design, all that shit. I don't need to be there ever. But I also do IT. So if someone can't connect, if someone can't do anything, stuff like that. So I have to fucking make sure everything's working. So that's what I'm. And then it's like, hey, like you know, a week and a half ago, I'm like, hey, we should really look into. Actually, saw we talked about this on the on the live stream we did last time uh, with Sean and whatnot. And uh, when it was uh, what was it? Um, Sean, you weren't there, right, Mike? It was just Sean and Thomas and fucking Ryan from all the hype beer reviews and me. And then we did, um, <laughs> we were talking about it then. Is that like, um, <laughs> Ryan? Yeah, Ryan. I, it's always going to be Ryan. And that, um, like, ha- like, I was like telling these people, I'm like, hey, we need to set up some kind of like mobile networking. Like, we need to set up like some kind of goal, uh, like a uh, virtual meeting. Like whether it's go to meeting or you know some Cisco whatever or whatever, I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. and then out today they're like yeah we need to figure that out like tomorrow. I'm like I asked you fucking a week ago to set it up. I'm like I told you we we're gonna need it, and they're like oh we didn't realize we we're gonna have to need it. And I'm like now, so now I have to set everybody up on fucking I guess we're gonna use Zoom or whatever the fuck it is because people have to people use need to use their phone. So it's now me walking through random humans. Who don't know how to turn on a fucking blender telling them how to download an app like i literally have to be like you go to the app store oh you don't have you don't have an account on google play app store or iphone now you have to set up an account oh you don't own a credit card okay now i need like that shit you know what i mean like it's like basic human stuff to where you think everybody knows how to do something that's what i have to do so i have to do my normal job and then do that so like it's like literally like my work yells at me when I work when I'm not supposed to be working. Like they'll send me emails on like Saturday and I'll answer them. And the owners of the company will yell at me and be like, don't answer fucking emails in a week. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> but at this point, I'm like, I'm not going to like, I'm just going to answer emails whenever I feel like it. I'm like, just, right. It's going to work on the weekends, but uh, you know, if I have to go get groceries and wait in line on a Wednesday at two, I'm going to do that too. So <laughs> just I'm going to get my job done. They don't care. They're like, yeah, whatever. We don't give a fuck. So I'm lucky. I'm lucky in that sense. There's gonna be a check in my bank account come fucking Thursday. That's all I know. I feel. Yeah. I feel like I'm extremely lucky that I'm still working. Like I, you know, I said we just cut the workforce by a huge amount today, and it, yeah. it's it's a scary thing. I, I I think all the time about this. Like even I, I go to work and people are like I can't believe this company's still open. This is fucking bullshit. I'm like, I'm fucking happy. I'm gonna get a paycheck this week. Mm-hmm. Like I am. I walk in this place that. You know, a month ago, I would easily be pretty negative toward it. And I'm happy that I'm going to be able to pay my mortgage in uh, a few days. I really am. And, and I feel I feel weird. But what this whole situation has made me is, is grateful for, in a, in a weird way, for what I do. Because it's so easy. It's so easy with you to be so negative And the company doesn't give a shit. Listen, I, I'm happy... I'm happy that I'm going to be able to pay my bills. I, you know, I just I had a whole bunch of bills. All my bills come out basically from like the 24th to the first. Like I, in about a week, I get all my bills taken out at one time, and I'm happy right now that I all my bills are going to get paid this month. I'm yeah. grateful, you know. I, I know. In theory, I can get. I can. I work on site, 
even though I, I technically could work from home because I'm a supervisor of fucking dildos, who knows? Um, <laughs> but but right now, like they're expecting people in, and uh, I'm, I'm happy. I, I really am, and and I go into work and 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 I'm, I mean, I'm I'm to nobody's opinion a cheerful guy, and I've been the cheerful guy at work. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm grateful that they they still pay me, man. I really am, and that sounds like uh, hey, people. Oh, you fucking company guy. Listen, the company's fucking paying me. I'm a company guy right now for sure. Yeah, don't fucking go fucking criticize me because my fucking bills are getting paid, buddy. Well, no, it's like, and that's and that's the thing. Like, like I've been on, you know, I like I work. I sit next to the two owners of the company. It's the husband and wife. They own the company, and I sit next to them. And we, you know, they came up there at my wedding. We hang out socially you know what i mean like they're really good people and like i've taken more call i've taken calls from them worried about how they're going to keep people employed and how they're going to how they're going to how they're going to keep the company open not because they want to sell stuff i mean ultimately the goal is that they sell stuff people get paid but they're like legitimately worried about people you know end up you know getting paid like a lot not a lot of people know like you know if you can file for unemployment all you want but if a company wants to fight it, then that's just red tape you have to fucking deal with. It's not like you get unemployment. So, you know, if you quit your job because you're uncomfortable about going into your job because of the coronavirus or whatever reason, the company could be like, well, they quit. They didn't fucking, we didn't fire them. They quit. And then there's weeks and weeks of red book. Like literally they sent out a company wide email. If you don't feel comfortable, comfortable coming to work, file employment we will not fight it we were never gonna fight it they're like go do whatever you need to do we don't care you know what i mean like so like for me not just to have a job but work for the kind of people that i do they like, give a shit you know what i mean like it's like and and just know that that it's like most people don't have that luxury is the reason like i work i work an hour away from my job i commute three to four days a week sometimes to go in and you know two two and a half hour commute and a lot of people like over the past two it, a year and a half, two years that I've lived down here in the farm, they kind of look at me and they, they don't roll their eyes, but they kind of go, well, oh, you're fucking crazy. Well, now I'm not fucking crazy, am I? Now you know why I fucking work at that place and I drive a fucking hour, a couple hours, you know, extra a day to go work there because when shit gets real, you know, I'm not, I don't feel stressed. I feel stressed because I'm a stress monger and everything stresses me about, about, about fucking everything. But, um, but yeah. such is life, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's his life. And that, and that's why that's why I have been declining to work because except for me, except for one place that's thirty minutes away, I'm driving at least an hour. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, and I don't. I, and I keep seeing different like, oh, one uh, one confirmed case popped up in this place in New Jersey. One confirmed case popped up in this place in Pennsylvania or whatever, and I don't, I don't want to be driving around everywhere. I mean, uh, well, I don't think that I don't think you should be worried about that because it's not a matter of you know, in the grand scheme of things, the odds are more likely that you're going to get it than you're not. It's more not getting it all at once. So it's not like it's not don't be fearful of, of it because the chances are, chances are you're gonna get it. We're you know what I mean? It, I think, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just that it's yeah. just that if you do get it in in a, in a very very small instance that you end up being one of the people that do need breathing assistance, because that's all it is. Like, listen, if you're sick, there's literally nothing you can do at all. The only thing you can do is if you have trouble breathing, you have to go see somebody. That's the brass tax of it. That's it. That's it. There's no other fucking. It's like if you're sick, if you have sniffles, sore throat, everything hurts. Fine, deal with it. You gotta fucking deal with it. That's it. Because there's nothing you can do about it. There's no kind of medication. That's it. You're the painkillers and all that stuff. Fine. There's nothing you can do about it. The only thing is you can get assistance with breathing, and that's kind of it. So it's yeah. not like it's not, it's not a matter of like if you go somewhere like you see all these people lining up like we just started doing like drive through testing in New, in New Jersey and people are lining up freaking out about getting tested and be like why do you care why do you even care if you have it or not like because well, if you do it doesn't matter if you have it what do you 
you to go fuck home and sit around and do the same thing you fucking already did. Well, You're not going to do anything. The thing with this is um, I have a friend who is an x-ray technician. Mm-hmm. And and basically, basically, uh, it uh, COVID nineteen is like the flu, where uh, basically, pneumonia. where yeah, it gives it. Basically, you get pneumonia if you get it bad enough. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he was saying he saw X rays of lungs mm-hmm. with this, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it is not regular pneumonia. It is. I understand. It is. It I is um and and people who get this who get the pneumonia and survive will have that's not true uh, that's not, i know exactly not right now. it's not i'm not saying it's not true i'm saying it's not it's not validated as truth so that's in in like not to pick on the teeth but like the one thing that i've been adamant about people steering clear of is the guy who has a friend who does something that's the way this shit gets fucking sideways is that my friend, I have a friend who does this, or my ha- friend has a friend that does this. So what you're talking about is basically that people get a, a chest congestion, they get pneumonia, they have lung issues, and then what you were going to say next was that after it's gone, then they have reduced lung function moving forward. No, this is, this is based on two different things. So, like, he's seen chest x-rays that are not regular pneumonia. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. then I, and then I've read articles that kind of basically say the same thing that he's saying. Like, this is not regular pneumonia, and if you get it, you're going to have health well, issues. No, that's a, not health well, issues that's, but. And that's bad reporting, because no one says it's like pneumonia. Like, no one says it is pneumonia. People say it's like. There's a lot of it's like. Because it's not that. If it was that, it would be called that. You know what I mean? So it's like, for example, one of the most popular things to say, and one of the most accurate things to say, is that COVID-19 is like the AIDS virus. And then you get coronavirus, which in turn ends up mutating and gives the coronavirus gives you the disease of COVID nineteen. No, so that's, two different. Well, that's not true at all, though. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Well, one of the things I, I heard it was the, the one the thing that, that, coronavirus actually mutates and give you the disease of COVID nineteen. That's the whole fucking thing, dude. Like that's why, it, but that's what AIDS does. HIV, no, HIV infects you and gives you the AIDS. It, like that's what I'm saying. It's go ahead. COVID nineteen is short for coronavirus 2019. I understand that, but there, it, there's two separate portions of the show. The base of the actual virus gives you the disease. I mean, listen, there's way more people smarter than us that should be talking about this shit. We shouldn't even be talking about it because there's other people that are way smarter than us to be talking about it. This is not a a fucking podcast about about these. And this is actually the worst thing that we could possibly do because it's a lot of people saying, I know this, I know that, I know this. When the brass tacks, even the people that know shit don't fucking know everything because it hasn't been long enough, around long enough for people to know fucking things. So hey, this, much, that's this, my this, point. this here, I know this is yummy. Yeah, and, that, and that's the best part about it is that people don't know enough. And then, But all we know is it's not good. It's not good. And... It hurts people yeah, more this, often. Not this, they're this, older, this, but it hurts everybody. And then it's not a good thing. That's this, all. This, you know, this as way, spit on the internet about random beer shit. That's what we find. This is where I worry is that there's reports of someone from Wuhan, China, that has got it twice. Yeah. Now, I don't yeah. know if it's true. I don't know if it's true. That's what I'm saying. You don't know if it's true. That's the whole yeah. thing. And that's the way. That is the way that all these kind of rumors kind of spin into facts that's the that's that caught a fish this big that ends up being a fish this big and it just ends up being it was that big i was there i saw it yeah it, but you didn't <laughs> you just say you did because people like to say shit and that's yeah, a no, dumb I, I, dumb stuff all i know listen, there's two things in life i know one if you hate puppies i hate you and two if you like joe percoco i hate you it, it, it's literally the, it's all about hate fair enough no well yeah, you know, I don't even want to spend any, any bullshit about this because honestly, at this point, I've accepted I'm going to get it. Yeah. And I hope I don't give it to my wife. Uh, that's honestly, this is my fucking life now is, is worries about that. Other than that, all I want to do is hang out. I'm, 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 I'm high risk here. I'm, I'm one of these elderly folk. 
You know what I mean? My sweet gray. But holy shit, I got a lot of gray. It used to be a lot darker. Are you like 40? How old are you? 44. 44. Right, I'm 30. I'm 35. I'll be 36 soon. <laughs> this is what you have to look forward to right here. It's... It's not that far away, I assure you. This is more gray than it looks like in this video. There you go. I'll make myself look better right now. Turn out all the lights. Make everything. There you go. Even better. It's a little darker. I'm going to get some just for men up in this piece. Just get me get me back to looking sexy. Anyway, um, Bill Bach chimed in. Puppy. Turning late That's up. My puppy. I love puppies. Oh, you want, hey, you want to see? Okay, we're going to do this right now. Oh, I've seen your puppy. <laughs> or your dogs. You have, you have a new dog since I've been up there? Oh, good Lord. Good Lord. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, you win. <laughs> Today. Keith, do you have a dog? I don't have a dog. We do have a cat. Cats. Don't care. Sorry. I know that. No. Cats are fine, but they're not dogs. Trying to find a picture of her. <laughs> and I have a cat. You want to see my cat? I don't know if you met my cat. When you're here, peanut butter. Peanut butter. No, I, 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 There's peanut butter right there. She just threw up. See her? Oh, peanut butter. Yeah, you can't see her. Don't mind there. There she is. Oh, awesome kid. <laughs> it's a bad picture, but that's Clara. And then we got baby cat. Is that the one that hates me? It hates everything? No. Baby baby no, cat just baby cat oh, wants wait, to cat. Cat. Oh, cat. Oh, cat. everything. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the one that hates everything. Which one's that? Clara. That's the one that hates everything. Uh, okay, gentlemen. I think I'm we're at two hours, Keith. Is that long enough? I guess. I have like a whole cooler full of beers here. I thought we were, I thought we were hanging out for like four hours or something. But whatever. We don't have to. I get I can drink these beers by myself. I got really good at it. <laughs> wow. Social distancing. <laughs> anyway, I respect that. I respect that. Before we leave, <laughs> let, let's uh, let's touch on a couple things. First, like I said in the comments, we had we had Bill Bach turning in. Uh, he says turning in late, but he also said just had a great beer from Puhala. You guys had anything from them? Yes, I have. Uh, absolutely fantastic Baltic porters. They're from Estonia. What else is from Estonia? Uh, Encino man. Thank you very much, Betty Betty Nugs. Uh, so that's what's from Sonia. But yeah, they're a great brewery from over there. It's like Lithuania, Latvia, Sonia area. They make really great beers. And uh, I don't see their stuff a lot, but it's really good. Um, sorry about the 15 minutes of us talking about specific um, uh, coronavirus shit. We should right. have never done we need, we, need to, we need to go and educate ourselves and then have a debate. No, we don't. No, we don't. Why? <laughs> Do I do I want fucking do I want some fucking herb doctor in here trying to talk about good fucking stout? No, so he no. could do his thing and we could talk about. Stout. I'm fucking. more I'm more worried about learning about Sabro hops. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll stick to the beer. We try to stick to the beer. We get a little off rail, so apologize for that. Um, Bro, I'm getting my master's degree. Yeah, master's degree. Here and be like, I still don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. No one does. No I call, does. I call practicing medicine, not you know, doing right. medicine. Um, right. And uh, let's see. Next bottle share. We don't know what it's going to be. Like I said, after all these videos, not in the comment section here, but or the uh, chat section in the comment section. Leave us the next beer you guys would like to do. Every time I say this, someone's like, "Oh, let's do fucking Hill Farm said Gin Clara," and I'm like, "Yeah," because everybody can fucking get that beer. Uh, yeah. If you can't, send it to Keith. But um, yeah, pick a beer. I don't know. We already did like we just did a Belgian Pale. We've done IPAs. I don't know what. I don't know what I'm in the mood for, man. Did you do any uh, fruited sours? Fruited sours. Did you do any like Samuel Smiths? 
in like an old school, like in like an OG. You know what I have in my fridge uh, right now is a Yorkshire Stingo, man. I'm oh. I'm gonna go chug that motherfucker tonight. It's gonna be delicious. Um, but yeah, let me get know. Let us know what you guys want to do on the next bottle share. Uh, if you have any questions for the guys here, you can leave them in the comments. If not, reach me, massivebeers at gmail.com. Um, you can ch check out Keith. Uh, Tuesdays, he's at the Laugh Factory under the name um, 94 uh, Slumber. If you want to check him out on YouTube, you can check him out at Keith at 93 Lumber. Uh, Mike's part of Nerd Sense. It is actually all one word, even though the logo looks like it's two words. And um, uh, Sean is also a part of Nerd Sense. Go check those guys out. If you haven't subscribed already, go check them out. They're some of the best dudes in the game. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. So there you go. Works for me. Yeah. 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 So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little broadcast. Hopefully you excuse us for trying to talk about fuck COVID for way too long. And it's hard not to though. At the end of these no, it is. Yeah. We have no problem talking about our lives that are affected, and then we started to talk about what it does and how it is and how it affects people. You're right. You're right. That. You're right. That's not what we do. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the old podcast or broadcast listen, or oh, live stream. Just listen to the experts. Let's let's just say that. Listen yeah. to the experts. And by experts, we mean, politicians. we mean the CDC and the World Health Organization and nobody else. Yeah. Not, so not, your, friend, not your friend who's a guy, not, not Twitter, not Hey, guys, president. this, this is going to be over by Easter. Yeah. Wow. Because we, yeah, it'll be a nice book. Man. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, Jesus. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Good talking to Matt. Good talking to Keith. Yeah. Same. Man. See you guys.